I'm going to be explaining how the 96-well enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, ELISA, for the quantitative detection of human cortisol works. The principle of the enzyme immunoassay we are using follows a typical competitive binding scenario. In this, competition between our unlabeled antigen, which in this image is the target antigen, and our enzyme-labeled antigen, which in this image is the HRP conjugate, will occur. First, what we do is we introduce any samples, such as standards, unknown samples, calibrators, anything like that, onto the plate well. This will have our target antigen in it. The target antigen will then be bound to the well plate. We then introduce the HRP conjugate antigen. This is going to compete with the target antigen for that capture antibody. The more target antigen present on the well, the more capture antibody will be bound to it. HRP binding to the capture antibody will then be washed off the plate and removed in washing steps. After completing several washing steps and decanting that solution, a substrate will be added. In this image you can see TMB, that is our substrate. TMB will cause an enzymatic reaction that is terminated by an addition of a stop solution. This reaction will cause color change in the wells and depending how much of our target antigen is present and bound to that well plate, we can then use an absorbance reader to read the plate and determine how much cortisol or whatever antigen you are trying to detect is actually present. The amount of color formed is inversely proportional to the concentration of cortisol in the sample. Now let's move on and learn how to set up our ELISA plate. Wow, what a tough exam. I can't wait to go into lab. Come with me. All right, now that I've got my coat and my gloves on, I'm gonna go ahead and get the box. Okay, and this is the fridge nearest the exit. Let's see what's inside this box. Instructions, we don't need those. Here's the plate. Here we have a plate, but I'm only gonna need four of these well. So what I'm gonna do is pop out the rest like this. and put it back into the bag. And I'll do that for all of these. And put it into this pre-labeled assay buffer and put it into the same label too, the HRP conjugate. We're gonna fill this up with 450 milliliters of water. It's distilled, and you have to watch this number to make sure it gets to 18.2. And now we're gonna get 50 mils of the wash buffer concentrate, but because the bottle is so tiny, I usually use a 10 milliliter and take it five times and then pour it into this over here. We're going to pour it in using this funnel. And I've labeled the bottle. And this is how you spin down the sample. It's open. You put two in here and two in here so it's balanced out. Lock it, and then set the speed to 10.
We're gonna take 50 microliters of the control, the calibrators, and our samples, and we're gonna put it in duplicate. And now we're gonna put 100 of the conjugate buffer. So I'm gonna pour it in. And we're gonna use this multi-channel pipette to take out 100. We're gonna put it on the incubator for 45 minutes. So we're using a multi-channel pipette from Eppendorf and we're gonna channel that three times on this four number. We're gonna place it on the plate shaker for one minute. And we did that three times with the wash buffer, so now we're gonna make TMB substrate. We're gonna add this TMB substrate and we're gonna add it into a wash well and take 150 using a multi-channel pipette. Once the TMB is in, we put it on the shaker for 15 to 20 minutes. Into each well using a multi-channel pipette. Hi, so today we're going to walk through how to create a protocol on the Gen 5 Synergy HTX instrument. Let's get to work! So we're going to come to the computer, select the Gen 5, which is here and here, and open it. Then we're going to make sure that we're on Protocol, which you can find in the Task Manager, and click Create New. Select Standard Protocol. Now we're going to come over here and toggle over this button, it says Procedure. We're going to set our things, so we're going to start with Read. We want Absorbance, Endpoint, and Monochromators. Click OK. Here we're going to set our wavelengths. For our purposes, we're doing 450, but if we wanted to read different wavelengths, we could select out to here and change these numbers. I'm going to hit OK. Now we're going to set our temperature. For our assay, we want the incubator off because it's at room temperature. And then we're going to set shake. You can do this for however long you want. Click OK. Make sure that you drag shake up above read, otherwise the instrument will get angry with you. And then press OK. Now that we're done that step, we're going to design our plates. So we're going to come over here to plate layout and we're going to select whatever we're going to include. For our assay, we want assay controls, our standard curves, and samples. actually going to go back and here I want to select how many controls I have. I have two so I'm going to put that up to two. Here you're going to have just an abbreviation. This is for controls so here I would type the full name. You can label that whatever makes sense to you so you'll know what it is. Hit next and I'm going to do the same thing here. Hit next. For our assay, we use calibrators to set the standard curve. So just so I remember, I'm changing this to cal and typing calibrator here. That's prognosis. And then come down, make sure this is on concentrations. And we're gonna type all of our concentrations of these known calibrators down here. Over here, we're gonna put the units. For samples, I'm going to leave this as SPL, I'm going to set the replicates to 2, I'm going to leave this as dilutions, and I'm not going to define anything because we do not know these concentrations. Next, I'm going to hit finish, and this plate layout will populate. This is the ex exact way our plate is laid out. 
So you just want to label what wells you're going to pipette things into. Because I forgot to put replicates for controls, I'm going to come down here and I can put it here. This will change what way it replicates. So right now it's set to the top and bottom well, but I want them next to each other, so I'm going to click this. And as you can see, it populates here. I'm going to go down to the next control and click like that separately or do the replicates and it'll do two at a time. This one's set in replicates and it's set next to each other, which is how I want it, so I'm just going to click through. As you can see, it's automatically going to the next calibrator. If I didn't want it to, I can uncheck this box right here. Now I'm going to go to samples. This is in replicates again, and it's next to each other, so I'm just going to come up here and click. And again, this is populating on this side, jumping to the next sample, but if I didn't want it to, I can come down here and uncheck auto select. You just keep clicking and defining all your samples until the whole plate is filled or until however many wells you used is filled and labeled. And then you would hit OK. Right, next you're going to come over to this corner and you're going to select this calculator button. I'm just going to scroll down and select standard curve. And I'm just setting this so that when the data is run, my curve will autom automatically pop up. And hit nonlinear regression and we want a four, four parameter for our purposes. I'm going to hit OK and OK. Now that we've defined our plate and set up how we want to read it and what data we want to populate, I'm going to come over here to the little save button, hit save, and I'm going to save this protocol. You can name this how, whatever you want, whatever you're going to remember. Hit save. Now let's say I was to run this protocol later and Gen 5 was not open. If I showed up to this computer, I would just open the protocol. click read now and then I could click existing protocol and pick the one that I just made hit open and then I would hit OK here and it would allow me to run the plate it says right now it's not communicating because the instruments off okay so we're gonna come over to our synergy machine to turn it on just make sure this is flipped up with the light and to open it, press this button, and it'll just open. We're going to take our plate and place it here so that the A is matched up with the A here. Then we're going to come over to our computer. We're going to open up the Gen 5 app. Okay, now that it's open, we're going to take our plate and place it on the instrument. We're going to make sure the A lines up with the A in this corner. Then we're going to come over to our computer. I opened up the Gen 5 app, and when it launches, it'll bring up Task Manager, so click Read Now. We made a protocol earlier, so we're going to open up our existing protocol. Open that, and we're going to hit OK. Then it's going to start reading our plate. And as so you can see, the plate went inside the instrument, and now it's reading. So as the data starts being collected from the instrument, you'll start seeing numbers populate on the screen here. Okay, so after our plate ran, the data populates here, and this will automatically pop up, so we just want to save our experiment. I'm going to name it for our samples. So we just got our data, and when that populated, I saved it. Now to export it, I'm going to come up here in the left-hand screen and hit plate. Scroll down to export. As you can see, an Excel sheet pulls up with all of our data and curve. And I'm just going to save this into a file on the computer.